Hello and welcome to the Wine Review. I'm Ryan the Wine Guy. This is Sean Previet. And um, we're doing a wine review today. It's been a long, long time. I know a lot of you have been asking about it. Facebook, YouTube. Here we are. Vino. It is a Mencia Robo Alvarez de Tolito. Imported by Misur Tutan, one of my favorite um, wineries. So my will be me. Since the XV century, the Alvarez de Toledo family has cultivated and harvested vines in Vizizo. In keeping with family tradition, the next generation has carefully produced this artisanal wine. 13.5% alcohol by volume. You're looking at probably a solid $15 wine. Um, like I said, depending on where you live, where you come from, it could be um, 12, it could be, um, let this more out that you can all see, that's a pen. Sorry, everyone. Should set this up better. All right. Uh, so depending on where you live, you know, you're looking at 12, I would say, as high as maybe 17, but it's really not. It's a very inexpensive one. Um, I don't know much about the grapes that are in here. It doesn't say. But I just kind of like the Ladybug look logo. It's like sort of like a shield of some sort or uh, some sort of flag. Um, but anyway, we're, we're going to get right into it. We're going to get right into the um, aromas and the tasting and then the final rating. So there's a mild spice on here, but it's not it's not an overpowering spice. It's sort of like a, I don't know, baking spice, um, if you will. Uh, there's um, a little bit of anise on there. Maybe just a hint of nutmeg. A little bit of granite. Big uh, mixture of red and dark berry. I get some a little bit of blackberry, a little bit of dark cherry. My friend Zach is saying it's okay when I chug it. No, you don't chug wine unless if it's freaking whatever that Mad Dog 2020 or whatever that. I don't know that. Stuff still exists, but <laughs> um, there's, there's a little bit of a um, um, herb leaf like um, aroma in here as well. Yeah, maybe a little bit of uh, green pepper, mm -hmm. maybe uh, like if you're walking through a garden of some sort and you're walking through the, uh, the vegetable patch, so there's a lot of vegetable. Type of aromas in here. A little bit of Simon and Garfunkel, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. A little bit of uh, sun-dried tomatoes in here, I'd say. There's just a very, very light touch of raisiness in here as well. <laughs> All right. Now for the um, now for the flavor. Beat that, beat that to you like minutes ago. <laughs> wow, it's not an overpowering wine. Yeah, it's good. It is. I mean. It, 
it is dry, but it's not mm -hmm. so dry that it's just that that it just leaves us hard structure in your mouth. There is a great fruit lake component to it that really drives forward. Um, I was telling him earlier when we were practicing, um, I get this sort of seedy lake taste um, as if you've had a, um, a blackberry that's really, really ripe or something. And it's, uh, has a, like a very seedy type of, um, you know, a seedy type of blackberry or after you've maybe had a lot of blackberries, you sort of get that sort of puckery, um, seed taste. I get that. Um, there's also, again, that sort of dark cherry to this taste. Um, when you just let it really sit for a while, those herby um, tastes as well come forward. So like that, a little bit of that green pepper um, kind of really sits in there. Sort of a little bit of a plant-based uh, taste, um, but very good. The the, the, the fruit and um, the the earth components that are in here really really settle well. And um, one 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 reason why I like Spanish wines is because they have a way of making wines that are that are dry, but not to the point that they're that they just leave you with this potent taste in your mouth, where it just feels like somebody's just taking a sandpaper and just rubbed your tongue. I don't mind that taste so much. My my friend here, Sean, isn't all about the full blown like pow pow dry. I like sandpaper. I use it all the time when staining things, but not when I drink wine. <laughs> but, um, you know, th this wine is different because as a dry wine, you get, you do get a lot of flavor in it. And I, and I really, like I said, this is all based on off of preference. Um, I, there's very few wines I dislike. So I, I mean, I can't really do sweet wines, um, but as far as dry and fruity, I, I mean, I, I'm okay to go one way or the other. I, I have a big palette of um, spectrum, so I can understand. And of course, I sell wine for a living, so I have to know what things taste like, so I can sort of gear towards people toward what they like. So I mean, if, if you're a person that um, really likes dry wines, I might definitely say this is for you, but if you're someone that's really not too much into dry wines, but you don't mind if there's that dry backbone to it, I would still say, I mean, this I, this could suit really anyone, I think, um, because it's not too harsh, but it's also not too bland i mean there's there's just there a little bit of something in there for everyone so with that um oh and i forgot to say the year the year is this is a 2013 this is the 2013 year vintage um <laughs> all my old hopes and dreams all bottled up into this this glass and this bottle <sighs> but um now that i um, now we're going to go into the final rating. Um, I would be pretty, I would be pretty okay giving this a four and a half. I mean, you've got five years on it. Um, I mean, five years for a Spanish wine. Probably could easily see another three to five. I would say maybe three to five, and then just. Possibly could have been a five out of five. 
I would even say maybe even two years. I think five years is probably five more years is probably too much. Um, but I would so I would definitely say 2020. And um, if you can find a bottle of this, I would probably say by 2020, it 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 will be flourishing at its um, finest peak and still doing pretty well now. So you just have to tap it more. See how those um, flavors all come together. But right now it's a four and a half out of five. So that's that's nice wine. That is. That's all he's asked to say about that. Anyway, uh, been great seeing you all again. I'm going to hopefully start doing more reviews now during the summer. It's got a lot of white wines coming up for you all. Now that it's hot, hot, hot outside. Uh, so I'll be on the lookout for quite a few more whites, and um, hopefully we can pick things back up. I can uh, make this a routine weekly thing like I always have been. Anyway, um, I'm Ryan the Wine Guy. I'm Sean. And we'll see you all next time. Those Cheers. Cheers.